Hello, I'm Attorney Noreno Petro, Chief Information Officer for Homes from Kennedy PC in Rockford, Illinois, and a member of the ISBA's Committee on Legal Technology. We're here today to talk about securing your online document storage. Well, thank you for joining us for today's tech tip, which is securing online storage. And the reality is that more and more attorneys are storing documents and other information in the cloud. And there are both free and paid services, uh, and they differ in the levels of protection that they give you as an end user to secure those documents. Um, what we would consider on the more risky end of the spectrum are the free accounts from such services as iCloud and Dropbox and Google Drive. Um, they don't give you a lot of control. They control many of the uh, tools that encrypt and secure your data, and so we generally consider these to be a little bit more on the risky uh, end of things. There are other services that are less risky that we would consider to be more secure. Box for business and enterprise, Spider Oak, uh, ShareFile, other ones. Um, there are Google, or, uh, correction, Office 365, uh, Tresorit. These are all generally considered to be more secure services. And the, the reason for that is, is this. It about, it's about who controls the key that is used to encrypt your data. Because if you're really going to put confidential or privileged information out there where others might be able to get to it, or if your uh, data was breached, it could lead to uh, embarrassment or a violation of the rules of professional conduct, you want to take steps to secure that data. And you do that by encrypting that data. And basically, that uses a key that you have uh, or that the storage provider has to encrypt the data so no one else can look at it and read it without having that key to decrypt the data. Um, the big question is who has that key? Is it the end user being you or is it the cloud service provider? Well, you say, well, what difference does it make? Well, it's like this. If the end user, if the, um, if the cloud provider has the key, it's like saying, I have a key to your office. If they get served with a subpoena or other government order to surrender data, they can decrypt your data, whether they should be able to do that or not, they have the key. If they have the key and their security procedures aren't up to snuff and their servers are breached, someone can decrypt your data because they've also accessed that key. So that is why it's important, uh, if at all possible, for you to control the encryption key that is used to encrypt your data. Now the good news is there are a number of tools that will allow you to do this with the free services such as um, Dropbox, Google Drive, and, and others. Um, some of those tools include Sucasa and, and Vivo, Cloudfogger, Boxcryptor. There's a number of these services. Sucasa and Vivo are paid services. They have a higher level of protection, some argue. Um, they do offer a seamless user uh, experience. They do say, at least in Sukasa's instance, that not only are they HIPAA compliant, but they're FERPA compliant. So they're saying they comply with the federal laws regarding uh, security and data. Uh, SafeMonks and Boxcryptor are free. Cloudfogger is free. These are all solutions that you can use. You have to determine based on your review of the likelihood of a breach, which tool you want to use. I use a number of these tools for my most uh, critical data. I use Sucasa and Vivo. I have also used Boxcryptor and Cloudfogger. Um, the big question is, well, how difficult are these tools to use? What do they look like? Well, actually, you continue to work the way you're used to working. What happens is, for an example, Sucasa places a folder inside your Dropbox folder that's called Sucasa. Vivo does the same thing. Cloudfogger and Boxcript also do. They put a secure folder inside Dropbox. So your entire Dropbox account isn't secured. Only those things that you put within this folder are secure. And that's not a bad thing. Um, this is how Cloudfogger looks. Once again, it places, this is inside Google Drive. It places a Cloudfogger folder inside Google Drive and that's where you would place the information that you want to encrypt. Well, how do you know that the files that you place inside one of these folders are actually encrypted? Well, both of these products add a file extension to the file. In this case, um, Cloudfogger shows it as a .cfog file. This says that this file is a Cloudfogger file. It's been encrypted. Without that key, you're not going to be able to access it. If you try to open this file, a Cloudfogger file, this is what you get. You get a message that it's been encrypted with Cloudfogger and everything else is gibberish. You can't, you can't see any of the data. Um, 
you have to be able to provide when you log in to your account, your email or ID and the password that you've created. Okay? This is what that file actually looks like, but what we can see from trying to open it without providing the key to decrypt the file, this is what we see. So once you provide the key, you see the entire contents of the file itself. Uh, these services are relatively easy to use. They work not only on your iPad and on your computer in these storage accounts, they also you work on your mobile device, such as your iPhone and Android tablet, even some Windows uh, smart devices like the Windows 8 phones. So if you're going to put information out uh, in the cloud and you're not using a service that allows you to natively provide the encryption key, then I really think you need to be looking at one of these either free or paid encryption tools that work with Dropbox, Google Drive, or other services. Thanks for watching. You've been a terrific audience. And always, if you have questions, go to isba.org and search on Ask Colt to find the Ask Colt option.